Hello everybody and welcome to Morning with May Monday. My name is Jeremy. And I'm Jane. And this week we are reviewing the B-side to Morning with May's Onagame da Tenazi Ikenai. This is the B-side, Naki Dasuka mo Shirenayo. What he said. Onagame da Tenazi Ikenai is a really fun A-side and was a really great way to kick off the post Koharu Morning Musume. And I feel like the whole Koharu Morning Musume was very sad and very melancholy and a little depressing as far as the Platinum Era was concerned. And I think that we jumped into this really fun and funky Sunku that we didn't see for a very long time, not since the very beginning. Niki Desu Kamoshi Denayo really gave me very high expectations for what the future of Morning Musume B-Sides would be, because up to this point, I feel like Sunku's B-Sides have been very subpar. This one, however, really set a high standard for what they should sound like, and Sunku was really on his A-game with these B-sides. The overall instrumental sound of this B-side was this mid-tempo, sultry, dark... I don't really know how to describe it. When I first heard it, it sounded very R&B to me, but then listening to it again, it almost had this interesting sort of jazz sound to it. So I'm not quite sure where I want to put this style-wise. This is one of my absolute favorite B-sides of all of the B-sides that exist. It's one of the very first that I was just like, yes, this is the best B-side that Tsunku's ever done. And then a lot of them after this particular one, I really just fell in love with. So this is the era where I really fell in love with Tsunku's B-sides. The song progresses in a very uh, mid-tempo way. It has a, a, a nice drive to it without being a fast song, but still quick enough that it's not a true ballad. And I like that tempo for Sunku songs because I feel like when he does a ballad, he does a ballad and it just kind of drags on. Even the good ones sometimes have a bit of a draggy quality to them. Conversely, when he does a fast song, it's just fast. So a true mid-tempo song is a, uh, a welcome change. I really love the very sad undertones of this song mixed with the slight seductiveness of the English lyrics and the piano melody that was playing in the background. During the bridge, the little just instrumental section, the piano had a solo which unfortunately sounded to me a little plinky synthesized, like it wasn't even a real person playing the solo, like it was a computer doing it. Especially when the trill happened, the dee -dee 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 -dee, it just sounded very much like a computer playing a <laughs> piano solo. That's my only real complaint about it. This was just a nice emotional layered sandwich of music that just worked way better than I feel like the Platinum Era did because I feel like the Platinum Era had the same undertone to it, but I feel like the way that Sunku prepared everything was so similar to each other that this one really stood out and especially the use of the piano I feel like really drove that sadness level that he was trying to achieve the whole rest of the Platinum Era and finally got it right in this one B-side. Not to say that the Platinum Era was bad, but this one really reflected everything that could have been fantastic about the Platinum Era in one B-side. Let's not forget to mention that this song has a gigantic Junjun solo and that, my friends, is the way to win any B-side for me. Out of all the solos, Lin Lin's really stood out to me as being just, it just sounded right. Sometimes a singer will sing a song and it just sounds right to you. I would love to hear this entire song done by Lin Lin. Morning Musume era Lin Lin, not Battle Bean Lin Lin. I was also pleased to hear some solo lines from Jun Jun, who both live and on the recording sounds really nice. Really, I just miss those two. What I have always really enjoyed about this song is the way that the lines are distributed that it almost feels like a collective heartbreak. That this is all a bunch of girls that are conversing with each other about lost love and heartbreak, and it's almost like they're helping each other move through it in the way that the solos are arranged where you have a singer and then there's some kind of duet, and then the other person that was doing the duet gets a solo, and it, can, it repeats that format through the rest of the song. So it's almost like these girls are helping each other through the trials of being heartbroken. Is it bad to call this song sexy? This is a sexy song to me. I know that it's supposed to be sad, but this was a very sexy song combined with the very sexy, sultry, seductive dancing. Everything about this was just a sexy, sad song. That sexiness even correlates with the lyrics. I'm wrapping you in this big love, but it's not enough. Almost like the relationship is sexual and steamy, yet it's just not at that point of love that's happening that the guy is using the girl sexually, but they're not connecting 
in the way that she wants them to emotionally. She's asking for a little tenderness, to be shown affection, but this guy almost appears to just be jerking her around. He told her he loved her once and made her fall head over heels for him, and now he's just kind of using her and, you know, calling her up when it's convenient. And it's really kind of sad. And there's a reoccurring lyric about, you know, I'm just a girl and I could burst into tears at any moment, which the part of me that doesn't like portraying girls is weak, really hates it, but the other part of me um, that has seen, you know, men and women in this kind of relationship where they're just so into the person and, you know, the person never calls them back and, and doesn't answer their calls and is just generally unkind to them in the relationship, just kind of, my heart breaks a little at that line. Coupled with the English lyrics that Ai Chan did throughout the song of, give it to me right now, um, can you give it to me right now? It's almost like this plea for help of, can you please give me this love right now that I need? This song is just very well written. It is an A plus for Sunku, and I feel like the emotions of the song really draw you in, and everything about this song pulls you into the mood that Sunku wanted you to be in while listening to this song. That it makes you sad, and it makes you feel like you are part of that story, and that you are in this moment with these girls even if you may not be in the same situation as them it really draws you into that story and i like good storytelling especially when it comes in the format of a song so sunku did a very good job here overall i have to say that sunku did a pretty good job this time so thank you all so much for watching. This week I would really like to know if you liked the A-side or the B-side better because I think that this is one of those B-sides that really rivals its A-side in the very best way. And next week Jacob is going to be on vacation with his family so I will probably be taking Morning Miss Moon Monday all by myself. So that will be fun and interesting for all of us. And if you have any questions that you want me to answer, Morning Miss Moon Monday related, anything about our skits that we've done so far, whatever comes to your mind, feel free and ask those and that will help fill in some of the gaps for next week. And I will see you all then, and Jacob will see you in two weeks after my birthday. Peace out. <laughs> you take your mouths. <laughs> oh.